Buildings with windows such as these, with many smaller panes of glass grouped together, are very common. And they're very common in amazingly attractive subjects to draw. Whether it's a smaller, more domestic scale, such as these medieval buildings in Paris, in the heart of Paris, that somehow escaped Baron Haussmann's renovations, or whether they're grand palaces where the panes of glass are set in stone rather than held in place by timber battens, we come across them all the time when we draw. And it's really easy to just see them as something that perhaps is a bit of a hassle to draw, unnecessary evil with the sort of subject we have, and to take a shortcut in doing it. And I often see drawings with windows such as these where this shortcut has been taken. And I think it's disappointing because it invariably leaves the scene looking something less, leaves the building looking something less than it could have been. But before I can show you both what I think is a mistaken way to complete these windows and a better way to do the effect of the panes of glass, we need to get our windows in place. So I'm drawing these two buildings on a corner in Paris that we just walked up the alley actually that you can see on the lower right hand side. And as we got to the end of the alley, I'm thinking this building looks like it's going to buckle out and collapse on me before I, before I can get past it. When I got around the corner, I was so surprised to see these very old Tudor looking, if I may use my British historical perspective, looking buildings that were just amazing. These little gems do exist all over Paris. And it's always good to be on the lookout for them. The way I'm drawing this is the way I, I draw most things. I establish a part of the scene, a part of the object that I think is going to be most straightforward to draw most easily. And in this case, it's the first floor or the floor above ground level that has two windows set on each side of it. And I think this is more straightforward because it's a bit larger and the perspective angles aren't as great. But if I get these angles properly set up, then it's a good foundation just for going vertically. And then the only thing I really need to worry about is the perspective angles further up and keeping them angled enough and the angles of the sides of the building and of the other vertical elements. I have somewhat straightened this as I drew it, but I'm still trying to keep a fair bit of the, the lean that is both in the building, but also exaggerated by the effect of the lens on the camera. So this part of the drawing, actually getting the windows ready to be attended to, took by far the most time. It, it took me about 50 minutes in real time. And so you're seeing 50 minutes drawing in six minutes. And what I will do is I did take a photo of this drawing when I finished drawing the actual buildings with the windows, but without any effect on or in the windows. So that if you want to print a copy off, I've put it on my channel community page and you can print off the line drawing and just play around with how you create the window effects in your drawings. And so it's much quicker to get the second building in place, lined up against the first now. It is important to realize when we start doing a drawing that we need to take more care and more time with the, the first part of the drawing. And that we shouldn't feel impatient or that somehow it's reflecting the time will take for the, all of the parts for the entire scope of the drawing. As we get more and more established on our paper, 
we both become more familiar with the subject, but more importantly, we have more and more points where we can align new things we're drawing with things we've already drawn. And that really speeds up not just the drawing process, but the accuracy of the drawing process. So now I'm going up and just trying to establish with these windows how many panes of glass are in them. And firstly, doing this accurately is the first important part of this process. Not to shortcut and simplify the windows and to particularly put less panes of glass. If there's a division on each half, we should try and divide them into half. If there are five divisions vertically, then we should try and put those, or if there are four, put them. We shouldn't end up with three panes of glass high if in our reference it's four or five panes of glass high. That changes the scale if we do. So I've taken a photo of our building outline and windows and panes of glass outlines and printed off uh, a copy. And so now I'm going to use it to show what it seems to me is the most common way of dealing with these windows, which is simply to fill in the panes of glass with pencil or black ink to represent the shadows of the space behind. Now, this is just gonna take two minutes here, sped up. It took me just over seven minutes in real time to add these shadows. And the easy thing about it is that once you start, you just keep going. You don't even have to glance at the reference. And sometimes a very handy thing when we are doing this is we can use these shadows to readjust some of the window divisions, some of the angles of the, the pieces of wood, the battens of wood that are holding the windows, the panes of glass in place if they don't quite align with the perspective or with the other parts of the window. But basically, it's just a case of knuckle down and go from one window, one row to the next, filling in the dark spaces. And I want you to think, well, how does it look? Does it look okay? Is it reasonable? Sometimes this is how a building looks, depending on where the sun is. But what do you think for now? Would you be happy with this? Let's have a look now at another way of doing it, and then we'll compare the two side by side and see which one is the most effective. So now we'll go back to my original drawing and I'll demonstrate what I think is a better way to do that. And that's to treat the windows, to treat the panes of glass, to treat the space behind the panes of glass, the same way we treat everything else in our reference. We do our best to draw it. We do our best to represent the form, the value, and where there's something that's a bit tricky to draw directly, we try and create the effect with our marks. And so what I'm doing with each of these panes of glass is I'm looking at my reference, I'm working out which pane of glass is what, I'm looking to understand what's happening in the reference, and then I seek to create that effect in my drawing. So what's happening with these two closest windows? And of course, because they're closest, they're probably the most important ones because we will see most easily what's happening in these apparently larger windows. And what we can see is that the sun is coming in at such an angle that besides penetrating the rooms, is also casting a shadow of the actual wooden um, battens that are there. And the shadows are mostly falling against curtains or blinds that are behind the glass. Now, where we have a blind, we have a smooth surface, and so we really just get a straight line below the, the horizontal strut. But where we have curtains, then we have a rounded surface which means that the shadow is distorted and curves around the bend, the fold in the fabric. Whatever is happening is what we need to try and replicate. 
And in some of these windows, the curtain is pulled back a bit down towards sill level and there's a space behind being opened up into the shadows of the room. And so we need to try and create the effect of that most easily just with a bit of black. So that's what's happening here. And it's also happening on the other side as well. And in some of these as well, the upper windows are dark because there's shadow from above, from the fact that these windows are set in and that inset casts a shadow. How much more time does it take to do the drawing this way? How much more time does it take? If we're to pay a little more attention, rather than just saying, oh, oh yeah, little panes of glass, we just make all of them black. How much longer does it take to pay attention to them and to see them the way we see anything and to do our best to draw them the way we would draw anything? Well, this drawing, or this version of the glass, did take me longer. It took me 15 minutes. So it took me twice as long as just mindlessly colouring in black in all the squares. But in effect, what that means is it took seven minutes more to pay more attention. It still isn't a great deal of time in a drawing that's going to have taken probably just over an hour to do from start to finish. And so when you think of it that way, it's really almost no more time at all to treat our windows in this fashion when it's added on to the time for the rest of the drawing. And so if that's the case, the question becomes, is the difference between the two, if we prefer this more considered version, is the difference between the two worth the seven minutes that it took? In a moment, we'll compare the two side by side and we'll just have a look at what the difference is, what the different effect or feel or impact on our overall drawing is. Because in the end, these are a component, the, these windows and the way we draw them are a component of an overall drawing that creates an overall effect. So we want to see them in the end in context of everything else. We're pretty much done here, I think, are we? Yep. So let's now compare them side by side. Here are our two renderings. And the question is, which one do you prefer? Which one do you think works best? Which one creates the greater sense of realism? Which one blends in with everything else that we find in our scene here? What do you think? In many ways, this one works okay, but what it does do is it creates, in effect, a dead space behind every window. It's like there's a black piece of board behind every pane of glass. And while sometimes that is the effect created by the weather conditions, position of the sun, what's happening in the room, very often it's not. So when we look at this one, we get a sense of, well, there are curtains here. There's, there's overhang that's creating shadow. There's curtains here that are hanging in a gathered way and are creating shadows. Some of the curtains are closed and some of them are open. And in some windows, we have a blind that's pulled down and creating shadows, but shadows of a different appearance. In this room, someone's pulled one of the curtains across completely. Up here, we have an open window and we have a blind on the other half. What we get is a much greater sense, I think, that this is a building that people live in. It's not just a historic architectural statement, but there's a liveliness of activity happening behind this building that we don't get with this one. This one in many ways is more reduced to an architectural exterior. Which one do you think works better? If I were to offer you one of them, would you take the one where the windows are all blacked in the same or would you take the one that has a reflection of the interior of the building and the activity that's happening within it? 
I certainly think that to try and replicate the effect of behind the glass, whatever is happening in our reference is almost always the preferred option. And I think the reason why so much of the time many people don't do it but opt for an all over generic consistency is the perception that it's going to be very difficult to do and take even more time than to simply black out behind every pane of glass. I think an extra seven minutes is a worthwhile trade-off for a drawing with a much greater sense of reality. What do you think? Well, it's not just what do you think, but what do you want to do? Because as I said earlier, I will post a copy of this building without any treatment of the glass and you can have a go yourself, paying perhaps a little more attention to what's happening behind the glass than you normally would and just see how you feel about the effect that you create. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If you tend to just black out behind every pane of glass as an automatic response to lots of small windows, then I hope you've found this interesting, but also consider giving a trial for a more realistic approach a go. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.